weekend to you. It's your brother, Larry Adineko, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of uh, information and inspiration in the knowledge of God, all being powered now by the Pastor Larry Adineko Center for Exuspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotion Hour, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on a great mistake, coming from 1 Samuel 25, 23 to 31. A word of prayer together and we get into it. Father in heaven, we bless your great name, O God. Thank you for a fine weekend. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We need your help, O God. And by faith we receive as we go into this for the sake of your people. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right then. So, <clears throat> um, for Samuel 25, 23. Now, when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David and bowed to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let my Lord not regard this scoundrel, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name. And folly is with him, but I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then let your enemies and those that seek harm be as seek harm for my Lord be as neighbor. And now this present, which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant. For the Lord will certainly make the Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall come to pass that when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you a ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maid servant. Praise God. All right. Uh, you remember that we spoke about this uh, lady uh, called Abigail the last time you know we were in the Old Testament and how that the woman was uh, uh, a leader woman and a woman of initiatives. Praise God. And I want to use this opportunity again to say that honestly that at several places in the Bible God has used women in great leadership roles. God has proven that women can be people of great initiatives and all this thing about trying to relegate women and push them back is just not I don't believe in it at all because the Bible has proven to us that God has used women his whole program his whole campaign his whole business the lord has used women at key moments you know uh throughout and proving to us that he really can use women the way he uses men hallelujah okay then but let's just go on into that little bit of um uh, today so abigail now you know came you know face to face with david and did the right thing when you honor a top general or somebody who's on the order of a prince or something you know she bowed down and all that and then she began to use um, um, wise words. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the Bible says a wise woman, you know, uh, builds her own house. It's a, it's um, an unwise one or a foolish one that tears everything down with her hands. A wise woman. Me, me, me are women be wise in Jesus' mighty name. A woman, a wise woman is a builder. It's a constructor. Okay? Puts together. You know, um, uh, uh, pulls together and makes to move forward. That is the role of, of a wise woman. It galvanizes. Okay, that's a wise woman, and that's what this woman was. Uh, and uh, people should learn from there. The second thing I could say about this woman: she used soft words. The Bible says that soft a soft word turneth away wrath. David was really angry, but the soft words of this woman turned away the anger of David. David was going to exterminate everything called male, you know, around Nabal. But the soft words of this woman, you know, turned things around. And we should learn from there. Uh, Proverbs uh, 15 verse 1 again, it says a soft word, a soft answer turns away wrath. When somebody is very angry and we don't use soft words, we are going to aggravate the anger at the end of the day. But soft words can make things you know uh, just uh, calm things down and we should learn that and pray for that and may God grant somebody in Jesus mighty name now one or two more things about this woman this very very interesting woman one of the things is that this woman knew David very well and that's a big lesson when you are up against something 
study hard prepare well know what you are up against find out how formidable you know the, what you are up against is and what's going to work here how, be strategic what will work what am i going to do you know uh, study the challenge the challenge before you study the challenge and then you know the way to address the challenge if you cannot break down a problem how are you going to you know um overcome the problem study your challenge this woman knew david very well let's look at a couple of things that she said about david she said that she knew the promises of god for david he said i know the lord will certainly make for make for you an enduring house and then he went on to say, because you fight the battles of the Lord and evil is not found in you throughout your days. He said, oh, but a man has risen to pursue you and to seek your life. But you see, the Lord will bound your life, you know, with the bundle of the living. I like that statement. I've never heard it before. You know, <laughs> bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. Amen. Okay, so she began to pray for David. She knew David. She knew some of the promises that God has made to David. She knew what of the, some of the testimonies of David and she was using them here. Okay, and then he went on to say, oh, but the life of your enemies, God will sling out, <laughs> you know, like, like a stone coming out of the pouch of a sling. In other words, he knew that David was used to slings. Of course, she knew the story of how David killed Goliath. So she knew that David was used to slings and he, she gave David what David could relate to, the sling. Okay, <laughs> praise God. She could have said something else about the enemies of the but she made sure that she brought in the sling there because she was addressing the matter at the David. I, I pray that somebody will catch some of the things I'm saying here in Jesus' mighty name. You know, he says, then, uh, according to all that the Lord has done and that the Lord has appointed you ruler over Israel. You know, so she knew that the things that God has promised David, God, what God was doing in the life of David, and she used all those things. Secondly, she knew God very well. And she knew that David would love somebody who knew God. You know, this channel is all about knowing God. But this lady knows God very well. Why do I say so? He says that, look, the whole thing that has happened to my mind is actually God trying to make sure that he has prevented you from shedding innocent blood. Nabal was the only one who offended you. You are going to kill all the males around him. God coming through, using me now, has prevented you from doing that thing. Number two, you are going to avenge yourself. We are asked, the Bible says, um, vengeance is mine. You know, says the Lord, I will repay, I will avenge. You are going to break that scripture. I can imagine David was wowed. You know, listening to this woman, this woman knew God. Okay, went on to say that I know that God will establish you as king over Israel. And when that has happened, please remember me. She did a word for herself somewhere there. I just love this woman, honestly. And I pray that somebody will take the challenge and go and study this woman further. You are going to find a lot more than the few things that we have shared here about this woman. But one big thing for me today is the one that is my punchline today. How come this wise woman? ended up with a man like neighbor you know you wonder how come she ended up with a man like neighbor <clears throat> i don't know but it's possible that our emotions got the best of her there are times when emotions make us suspend common sense there are times when our emotions just make us not to see the things we ought to see and just you know make us suspend sense rather just push us into emotion yeah people follow their heart yeah but be careful. Make sure that even while you are crying, you are seeing. That's what my people will say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so be careful what you, your emotions push you into. How will she marry you know, this kind of uh, person that she herself said, the servant said nobody can talk to him. She herself prayed, may the enemies of David be like this man. Can you imagine? How did the kind of woman, wise as she was, end up with a person like this? Another you know, uh, uh, thing could be she probably hoped she would change him. Yes, and that's one mistake a lot of people make, and that's why I call it the, the great mistake. She probably thought she would change him. I would be able to change him. Honestly, some people are making that mistake now as I'm talking. You are hoping that you can change this person. Believe me, it's not likely. It's not likely that you're going to change the person. Therefore, just let it go. God has other arrangements for you, better arrangements for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wise as this woman was, she made this big mistake. And that's what has, you know, led us to all this story. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. No matter what the case may be, make sure that you really, really, really pray and pray without biases. 
Pray without idols in your heart. Pray without uh, conditions that you have given in your heart. Pray in a most objective manner so that God may guide you. Hallelujah. Honestly, we must not repeat the kind of, nobody must repeat the kind of mistake this woman made. Beautiful, fantastic woman, but she still made this mistake. And I believe that somebody will learn from there today in Jesus' mighty name. So long we have time we have spent this morning, but it's okay. The Lord bless you. Have a fantastic weekend, will you? God bless you.